Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumanstein. In our top story, as the day for the primary election approaches, election officials continue to meet to iron out some wrinkles that could cause problems on voting day. On Wednesday, the Joint Election Board met via teleconference to discuss some issues, including who's responsible for transporting ballots from St. John, as well as questions over their new electioneering rule. News to April Night has more. The Joint Election Board dragged through its meeting on Wednesday and rattled off a list of concerns. Election Supervisor Carolyn Fox reported on the early voting period. Here are the numbers. According to Fox, 294 people voted on St. Croix with seven spoiled ballots. On St. Thomas, 505 with 15 spoiled ballots. And on St. John, 32 people voted with one spoiled ballot. On Wednesday, election officials couldn't quite agree on who's going to transport the St. John ballots over to St. Thomas, whether it's a judge, an election official, or a facilitator, all of which have vague definitions. Miss Fox, hold on, please. Do you know how we had to get the ballots from St. John after the last general election? That was an emergency. Well, well, so that was what do you think we did? That's what we talked about. Not be we done. wanted election official judge or election official. The Joint Election Board also finds itself dealing with questions surrounding the 200 feet campaign free zone that would be enforced around polling places this year. One of the candidates questions was, is it 200 feet from the voting machines or from the walls or from the fences around the polling sites? According to Joint Board Chairman Arturo Watlington, the law says from the fences. Some candidates have a problem with that in some polling places. That means that the persons who are electionarian at Julia Sprout School will be down in the water on the dock. <laughs> and more than three senators or aspirants have told me that they advise their people to ignore the 200 feet. The election board is holding a meeting with candidates on Thursday to sort out the details. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. And as you get ready to head out on Saturday, August 6, make sure you know your polling places. Here they are on St. Thomas. The Charles Turnbull polling site will serve the Joseph Gomez, Eudorican, and Bertha Bashelta precincts. The Charles and Molly Gym will serve the Oswald Harris Court, Winston Ramo, and Sibley School precincts. Gladys Abraham will serve that same precinct, while Cancrine will serve the Cancrine and Leonard Dober precincts. On St. John, there's just one polling place, and that's Julius Brow. On St. Croix, the Alexander Henderson polling place will serve Claudio Marco. Educational Complex will serve Evelyn Williams, Eulalie Rivera, Alfredo Andrews, and Charles Emanuel precincts. Ricardo Richards will serve Lou Muckle, Juanita Gardine will serve the John F. Kennedy and Elena Christian precincts. The D.C. Canagata Rec Center will serve the Florence Williams and Pearl B. Larson precincts. Please check with your local election offices for more information. The last two days has been all about the public education system at the Senate as the Committee on Education and Workforce Development held a series of hearings. There was a bit of confusion over Bill Number 31-0337 Education officials stated that a bill mandating a structured civics course is not necessary since they're already doing it. But committee chair Jean Ford said it may not be enough. What the bill called for is a mandate um, for civics to be taught 9 to 12. Recognizing that you said that it's being taught already in the second, third, fourth, and eighth grade. Um, I feel that you already recognize the need to teach it. Mm -hmm. We are saying we want more. We are saying more should be done even in the upper grades. That what is being taught right now is not sufficient. Committee on Education and Workforce Development, meanwhile, again chaired by Gene Ford, held a measure to preserve the rights of career employees after service in an unclassified position Tuesday at the Earl B. Otley Legislative Hall. Bill number 31-0101, sponsored by Senator Kenneth Gittins, was held in committee pending amendments with a vote of five yes, which was Ford, Gittins, Harrigan, Jackson, and Roach. Milton Potter, 
Director of the Division of Personnel explained that people knowingly accept unclassified jobs knowing there is a risk that they may not be asked to stay on board with new administrations. This is not because the employee lacks qualifications, he said, but rather because the administration may want to go in another direction. Governor Kenneth Mapp has vetoed Bill No. 31-0324, which is an act attempting to amend Title 27 of the VI Code relating to the licensure of physicians and expanding the conditions under which the Virgin Islands Board of Medical Examiners may issue temporary and special licenses to practice medicine in the VI. In his transmittal letter to the Senate President, Neville James, the governor stated, I truly believe that all of us want to maintain a high quality health care system in the VI and we will not, we will accept nothing less. Bill number 31-0324 is a bad bill, he said, bad policy and does not contribute anything towards a high quality health care system. Chairperson of the Governing Board of the Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority, Elizabeth Armstrong, announced Wednesday the selection of Julia Reimer Sr. as the authority's executive director and chief executive officer. Reimer has served as interim executive director of WAPA since January 26, 2016. Reimer has had the opportunity over the last six months to manage the day-to-day -day operations of the authority. Reimer, who joined the authority in 2012 as chief financial officer, has also had the opportunity to determine the strengths and weaknesses of the public utility, according to board members. Attorney Gerald Grona indicated that the board's three-member selection committee narrowed the candidates for the position down to three from the initial ten. During the interview, Reimer outlined his short-term goals for WAPA. Prior to joining the authority, Reimer held leadership positions in the VI Housing Finance Authority, the Office of the Lieutenant Governor, and the Virgin Islands Legislature. Here's an update. On Tuesday, we reported on a plea by a couple of residents of a senior housing complex on St. Thomas regarding abandoned buildings in their area that they say are becoming a threat to their safety. One lawmaker sheds light on the current status of cleaning up that particular site and what the immediate security solution should be. News News April Night has that story. Barbara Miller, a resident of the senior complex Sunrise Cove on St. Thomas, said she's spoken to some lawmakers about the danger of these structures. Miller, along with her neighbor Janice Voke, said the abandoned Michelle Motel in Content should be demolished to prevent the homeless from living there and loitering in their apartment complex, which is right next door. Since I've been here, there have been two stabbings that I know about. It affects how I sleep. It affects how I sleep, and I don't sleep well. Senator Marvin Blyden, chairman of the Senate's Housing and Finance Committee, was one of the lawmakers Miller got in touch with. He said Housing and Finance Authority is considering purchasing the structures from property and procurement. Demolishing the structures could cost up to $2 million and might not even be the best approach, according to Blyden. Right now, we even have not had a study in terms of seeing how um, structurally sound the building is because the building seems to be pretty strong. You know, certain areas. So it won't make any sense to demolish the building, whereas you can actually um, invest in the building and, and make it what it needs to be. But whether it's demolition or rebuilding the structures, the funding is nowhere close to being identified. But the safety and security threat is very real and ongoing, according to residents of Sunrise Cove. The only immediate solution, according to Blyden, would be more frequent police patrols to help the senior complex feel safer. Michelle Motel belongs to property and procurement, which is government property. And they need to do their job in terms of making sure that they so often they just move to and, and make sure everything is fine there. In terms of the, the squatters, they are, they, are, they are violated. They're not supposed to be there. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Turn our attention overseas. Just a week after holding a lead over Hillary Clinton in some polls, Donald Trump seems to have fallen off his post-convention high. Lately, Trump has been walking from one controversy to the next, and some inside the party are not happy. Scott McLean looks inside the campaign. In the election race, Donald Trump is up against Hillary Clinton, but lately he's even taking on his own party, as sources report tension and frustration within his campaign. Trump is trying to move past a series of recent controversies, including a feud with a Gold Star family. I was viciously attacked on the stage of the Democratic National Convention. 
by Mr. Khan. And Tuesday, a refusal to endorse big name Republicans like John McCain. I'm only thinking about it. I mean, I've you know never been a big fan of John McCain. And Paul Ryan, Trump telling the Washington Post he's not quite there yet. Sound familiar? I'm just not ready to do that at this point. I'm not there right now. Ryan has since endorsed Trump, but this week Trump acknowledged Ryan's Wisconsin primary opponent on Twitter. I haven't asked for his endorsement at all, no. I mean, if he gave me his endorsement, I'd be flattered by it. Now, sources inside the campaign say they are increasingly frustrated with Trump's apparent inability to stay on message. Campaign manager Paul Manafort today on Fox News denying he's losing control. Well, the candidate is in control of his campaign. The turmoil, this is another Clinton narrative that's being put out there. Uh, and that the media is picking up on. It. According to a source inside the GOP, some officials have suspicions that Trump may drop out of the race, though there are no signs he's considering it. All this while Hillary Clinton stays on the Colorado campaign trail, but away from the media spotlight. In Washington, I'm Scott McLean. And keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. According to the numbers there, we can see everything up. The Dow 41, NASDAQ 22, S&P 500 up at 6. Coming up on News 2, the U.S. VI Department of Health reports 14 new cases of Zika in the territory. That's according to the weekly surveillance report. Be sure to tune in. We have some important information coming up next. Welcome back. The Virgin Islands Port Authority is hiring two law enforcement officers and would like these officers to be residents of St. John. VIPA's Executive Director Carlton Dow said St. John is one of the busiest marine cargo and ferry operations and it is critical that we have a dedicated police president presence rather at our St. John facilities to ensure that our residents and visitors are safe, he said, and to minimize any possibility of incidents at the ferry and cargo ports. VIPA's law enforcement officers are trained at the local VI Police Department's Police Academy and must meet all local police requirements. You can visit VIPA's website to download the job description and an application. The deadline is August 17, 2016. The U.S. Virgin Islands Department of Health reports 14 new cases of Zika in the territory. That's according to the weekly surveillance report. The total number of confirmed positive cases in the territory is now 79. 20 cases on St. Croix, 58 cases on St. Thomas, and one on St. John. Out of 1,321 tests completed for pregnant women, 10 have laboratory evidence of Zika, 4 are presumptive positive, and 6 are confirmed. Here is the Commissioner of Health with more from the Fight the Bite campaign. <laughs> When it comes to uh, pregnant women, if a woman was tested and she found out that she had Zika, how exactly does it affect the pregnancy and what kind of care is taken then if she contracts? Well, uh, if a pregnant woman um, who has been diagnosed with Zika uh, would be looked after through um, specialist, mm -hmm. uh, um, OBGYN specialist to uh, uh, evaluate her through her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, and so her care would be stepped up. Uh, then they would definitely uh, be concerned about um, signs and symptoms that she has, but then also the transmittal of the virus uh, to her unborn child. Unfortunately, a number of, of infants have been born uh, with um, small brains, which can lead to um, learning disabilities. Uh, we don't have a high percentage yet, and that's what we're trying to prevent. And so that's why we want women to take uh, preventive causes mm -hmm. so that they aren't infected and then subsequently transmit the virus to their uh, unborn child. And how exactly does it affect um, infants and unborn children? Um, it can affect the, the unborn child. The, the child will have a smaller brain. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, that's what we want to prevent because um, when the child goes to school, they can have um, a number of, of learning deficiencies and and uh, we don't want that to happen uh, uh, to the child.
sure to tune in weekly for Fight the Bite. Meanwhile, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, they approved the Department of Health request to increase vector control efforts in St. Croix and St. Thomas, St. John. That's to include public areas. Expanded mosquito control services for the general public will include inspection and treatment of all hospitals, clinics, schools, churches, and daycare centers requesting service in the territory. Mosquito control will also be directed to public places with a history of related mosquito-borne diseases, such as dengue and chikungunya. Mosquito control teams will inspect and treat any public site, including empty lots, abandoned swimming pools, or construction sites that may be posing a mosquito problem. About 50 students in grades kindergarten to fifth reach for the sky by succeeding and achieving academically and socially at Lil Muckle Elementary Schools, learning with purpose, extended learning opportunity. That's a summer program that began June 27th and ended July 29th. The students, along with instructors, gathered at the Muckle Cafeteria to showcase their month-long accomplishments and experiences in a culminating activity held for parents, friends, and community stakeholders on Friday. The students highlighted their achievements and skills in English, language arts, mathematics, uh, thematic projects, social interaction, and in other areas. Students illustrated their experiences in song, drama, and PowerPoint presentations by grades. They had a lot of special guests as well. This summer, Virgin Islands children with autism are enjoying a typical summer camp experience alongside peers without disabilities, thanks to a partnership between St. Croix-based Island Therapy Solutions and several VI camps on St. Croix and St. Thomas. In all, 18 children with autism ranging in age from 2 to 17 were able to attend the camp programs. Children with autism commonly have difficulty communicating, regulating their emotions, and navigating social situations. For the third consecutive year, AZ Academy on St. Croix has worked with, its, with, with them to accommodate children. The St. Thomas Reformed Church has collaborated with its uh, students for two summers in a row this year. An additional camp at Nurturing Minds Daycare participated in the program on St. Croix. Be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast comes your way next. This weekend and early this week was very active in our region. Now we're enjoying the benefits of an area of high pressure. A lot of sunshine today. Nice clear evening coming up tonight. We're going to watch this little area of moisture well off to the east. Not expected to develop into a tropical system, but nonetheless, it is an area of tropical moisture. And if it does move close by, we'll see an enhancement in those showers and thunderstorms. In fact, estimated radar showing some heavier downpours over the open water, but not much in our backyard. Just a couple of trade wind showers across the Lesser Antilles in particular. Otherwise, the Virgin Islands enjoying beautiful, quiet weather for tonight. Just a few clouds, maybe a shower or two early. Temperatures will stay in the lower 80s for tonight. Tomorrow at St. John, we get to 90 degrees. It's that typical heat and the usual mugginess, too. The sea breeze will kick up a little bit later in the afternoon and help to get that air moving. It'll feel a little bit better, but morning and evening, definitely a touch of mugginess. Same goes for St. Thomas. Temperatures close to 90 degrees tomorrow afternoon with just a passing shower in places. Maybe a downpour that lasts about 5 or 10 minutes, but then we get right back to the sunshine. Same pattern in St. Croix. Temperatures will be in the lower 90s. Stray shower, otherwise plenty of sunshine. Out on the water, waves are about 3 to 5 feet on the Atlantic side with those trades coming out of the east at 10 to 15 knots. Same wind speed and direction on the Caribbean side. Waves also about 3 to 5 feet in the near shore. Could be some higher swells once you get out into the open water. Here's a look at that 5-day forecast. We'll see temperatures in the upper 80s to low 90s over the next couple of days. A shower or two through this weekend. Could be a thunderstorm on both Saturday and Sunday, but the point here is no big organized tropical systems moving through anytime soon. So not looking at any washouts here. You'll still get to enjoy plenty of time in the sunshine. Looking to take a walk on the beach early in the morning. Temperatures will be starting off in the lower 80s. So a nice, beautiful stretch here as we go through early August. Sandy, back to you.
Thanks for that. Let's take a look at the news to weather picture there. Zagani Alexander, nine years of age, representing Lockhart Elementary School, shows us what we saw over the weekend. Some uh, cloudy conditions there, some showers here and there, and we are still in the hurricane season, so you never know, but for now it's okay. Zagani, thank you for that. Send us your news to weather picture too. News to Innovative Business Center, 4611 22 Park Street 300, St. Thomas VI 00802. Be sure to include your name, age, school, and a brief description of your work of art and then tune in to see it right here on News 2. That is all for now. We'd like to thank you for joining us. I'm Sandra Gumensing. Have a wonderful evening.